Hello! So, finally, the moment we've been waiting for, we are going to start on the dress. Except... Baby cat! Okay, except for kind of not. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to do a mock-up before I cut into my fabric since I have a limited amount of fabric. I bought this fabric a little while ago, maybe... Man, maybe two years ago? I bought this fabric probably around two years ago, actually, at this point. Um, time flies when you are in quarantine. But I bought it originally for the Breath of the Wild Zelda costume that I did for the last convention to ever happen. <laughs> We're gonna be making a mock-up this week, and I think it should be a pretty straightforward process. I'm gonna be using one of Angela Clayton's McCall's patterns. It's from her Dewdrop series, and I will link that series of blog posts in the description. So I think in this video, we're mostly just gonna be making a mock-up, and I don't think this should take more than one mock-up because it's a pretty straightforward, this is what it looks like. It's not like a corset where if I make one change, then that affects everything else. There's already a silhouette established thanks to that corset. We're gonna go through making the mock-up and then doing a fitting. I've been having some issues with the new house and my sewing studio, so my time for making videos has been cut down a little bit, so I'm really sorry for that, guys. Honestly, I'm probably more disappointed than you guys are, but uh, that's where we are right now. So this week will be a little bit of a shorter one, and hopefully I can uh, get right into actually making the dress soon. So for now, let's just get right into making the mock-up. All right, it is kind of a cloudy gray day and there's a bunch of tornado sirens going off, I think, but I wanna get this filmed, so we're doing it. Sorry if the lighting's not great because of the rain, um, but here we go. This is my pattern for Alice so far. This is the fabric that I will be using. And it's just a cheap poly velvet. They sent me a whole ton of extra fabric for some reason, so I decided that this would be a good use for it. It's not quite what Hannah suggests. She suggests a silk instead, but this is what we've got, so this is what we're doing. I'm not buying more fabric. I am using one of Angela Clayton's McCall's pattern, and that's McCall's 7885. And I think I mentioned in one of my earlier videos that it's, it's actually the pattern that Hannah suggests. However, the skirt is really not correct for Alice. It's This is a lot more like French court Rococo style rather than Victorian. So we're gonna be doing something else for the skirt. For the pattern, I've made only a couple of adjustments. First off, I cut off all the seam allowance because I don't like to work with seam allowance on my pattern. I prefer to draw it on the fabric. I've changed the measurements to fit my own because, you know, standard size patterns don't tend to always fit the majority of people. So I just made some alterations regarding measurements. The other things I've done that are more stylistic than functional, I've made the center front more of a point because Angela's is more rounded. I think that's mostly it for the bodice. I did make some alterations to the sleeves because I want the sleeves to be bigger and puffier, so I did add quite a bit of volume to the sleeves. So this is gonna be the sleeve ruffle, and that's the part that just kinda hangs off of her sleeve. I don't know if this will actually work or not. We're just kinda winging it for that because it's an abstract, amorphous kind of shape. And then I also made an undersleeve pattern. So this is based off of my measurements. It doesn't have much to do with the commercial pattern. The commercial pattern does not come with an undersleeve. The only part that matches up to the commercial pattern is this inner part of the undersleeve. And then I measured how wide I wanted the sleeve to be on my body. So undersleeves are super important because they are what keeps your sleeve puffed up. If you don't want to use elastic, which is nah, not really period. Um, and <laughs> I got kind of judged in school whenever I was like, just stick elastic in it. And they were like, no, use an undersleeve. That's much nicer. It also is more durable because elastic will eventually degrade over time. So an undersleeve is what holds your puff up so it's puffed out. So without the undersleeve, your puff would kind of want to droop, like it would want to separate, right? Because there's no whole fabric holding it together. So the two things that keep your puff sleeve puffed is either something holding out the volume, um, and that would be something like stuffing in between your undersleeve and your regular sleeve, and this undersleeve here. And then you also don't want any of the puff, well, not always, this is not like a hard and fast rule, but usually you don't want any of the puff on the inner part of the sleeve. If you look at my two sleeve patterns here, you can see that most of the volume is going to be on the outer part of the arm. The inner seam of this sleeve, the under sleeve and the outer sleeve match up. Having puff under your armpit is not the most comfortable and not the most flattering. So that's what we've got for pattern so far. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this mock up and sew it up and then we'll have a fitting. So let's get on with the cutting and the sewing.
like that? I had to get some help getting into this because I can't lift my arms enough to get to the zipper back here. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to need some help getting out of it too. But I think it looks really good. I'm going to definitely stick some flipper bones in here at the sides of the arms because this just keeps wanting to peek out. I just, mm, that's fine. Oh baby, I'm so sorry. I just stepped on her little paw on accident, but I think she's okay. You're okay, right? Meow? Yeah? Okay, good. So I could probably bring the point up of this a little bit and it's gonna get a whole um what is it called i can't remember what it's called now the thing that goes what is it a bertha a bertha that's what it's called so it'll have a bertha that goes along the neckline and then that bertha is going to get covered with flowers so probably this won't even show at all but i might just bring everything up just a tiny bit so it does cover it i love the neckline i think that worked really well it's actually something that i didn't really change much at all i just made this a little more pointy than the original pattern had it so that's great the sleeves i think look pretty good too if you watch my petticoat video i showed how i keep the hem edge straight of green rather than making the hem edge like the wavy part so i did one that was the wavy part and one that was not the wavy part and I'm trying to decide I think I like this one better I'm not sure which one it is I think actually this is the one where I kept the hem straight of grain so that's cool that'll make applying trim so much easier I just I don't like how this one is like cupping out so much I guess other than that the fit is pretty good it's a little bit loose especially like right here in the front so I could definitely take that in a bit. So what I did to make it so that the sleeves are where they are, they're not gonna go anywhere, they wanna stay up by themselves, I just ran boning from down here all the way up along the sweetheart neckline, all around the shoulders, up to the side back seam. I think I like how off shoulder it is, that's nice. And then I think the sleeves are maybe a little too puffy, so maybe I can take a little bit off of there. This whole panel is too large I think so I can take this in and then I do have a bone along all of the seams just to keep them from crunching in on themselves and I think that's pretty good that's much better of a fit I think that the whole thing could go a little bit lower through the waist the reference image it goes maybe an inch past her waist so I think that I'll extend it so that it does go a little bit past that will help with defining the waist a little bit more. I don't know, it's pretty defined, so that's good. Yeah, this is definitely gonna need flipper bones because this is just like wanting to ride right down. Though maybe it's because I took in too much here. Like the whole thing is wanting to sit lower, I think. It might be easier if I just take these two bones out. Okay, both bones are out and I think that should make it easier to pin. So this is peeking up, yeah, about an inch. Where that is is just fine. We don't want too much cleavage, I guess. This is still a Disney cosplay, I suppose. Yeah, so I think if I lift the center front of this a little bit, that it'll be better. Baby bat! I know, it's almost food time. Let mom finish, okay? I'm almost done. So I think that everything looks pretty good. The main things that I would like to do are raise the center front just a bit, lower the hemline, so that it goes through the waist and not just stops at the waist. But I think that the fit is very good, so that's awesome. Yay for Angela Clayton, she did a good job with this pattern. I guess she doesn't really do the sizing on the pattern, but you know. Anyways, I like this pattern, it's very cute, and I think it is serving my purpose very well. Minimal alterations to it, so that's great. And then, let's look at the skirt. The skirt, I used a pattern from, what's her name, Honey Scent? I don't remember. It's a theater book, and it's pretty well known and I'll throw the link and the picture up right next to me so that you guys can see it. It takes historical garments and then translates them to patterns for theater, I guess. Um, so that's what I used for this because it was the only thing I could find that gave a really good description of an 1860s skirt. The skirt that I'm using as my reference from that book is from 1864, so right in our timeline, so that's great. The illustration for Alice is not super clear on what the skirt looks like. It looks kind of like it's just gathered, but that's too bulky, I find. I would rather do pleats than gathers in a skirt with this much volume because 
gathers will make the waistline really bulky. So we're going with pleats. That's normal of illustrations. They kind of are like big skirt. Let me draw some lines. We're going to do some of our own interpretation and this was one that I found that I liked and I think it looks pretty hip. But I like how much volume this was able to get of the fabric right here with all this pleating. And the pleating pattern is a little bit complicated. It's double pleats up until around here and then it's triple pleats and each of those are, they are two inches wide so like each pleat itself is like an inch in depth. The only problem that I'm having right now regarding the volume is that there is not enough fabric in the back. So I'm going to have to add a whole extra panel, which is going to make it kind of annoying because that makes an even number of panels and even number of panels are always annoying. <laughs> then you gotta like figure out how to make the front of the skirt not broken at all. That's alright, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Other than just like this not having enough fabric in it, this looks pretty good. Let me grab a stool so I can show you the hem. And for this as well, I did the same kind of method where I kept the hem on the straight of grain. All of the variation in length is taken from the top rather than from the hem. And that's so that I can apply the two lines of trim easier. And I think there's some other stuff. Oh, there's a whole bunch of embroidery, which is less important because I'll be doing all that by hand. But it'll make applying the two strips of trim a lot easier. So let's look at the hem. I think that it is just a bit too long. I think if I raised it up to about here, that would be better. So that is probably about four inches, really. I'm just gonna pin this out here so that I know how much to take it from because it's easier than bending over to do it. The back is very long, but I don't really mind if it pulls on the floor a little bit. With cosplay, more is more. I like to go for the really big giant skirts. You know, this would also be a really good peach silhouette. Very cupcake-like. So I think the back length is really good. I just think the front length needs to come up a little bit. Maybe that's a little bit too short. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> yeah, that's maybe a little bit too short. That's definitely too long. So let's pull you up just a little. That looks better. That's about three inches instead of four inches, I think. Maybe it's still four inches and the other one was more. Who knows? I think mostly what I want to change on the sleeves, now that I've been looking at it for a little longer, I think I want it to have more volume on the bottom than on the top so they droop down a little bit more. I think that would match the illustration a little bit more. I'm going to make those alterations and then I think that's it for this video. I don't really feel the need to make another mock-up since the alterations that I'm making are fairly minor and straightforward. That's easy enough that I can do it just by altering the pattern. So I'll show you guys the pattern alterations that I'm going to make and other than that I think that is it for this video. So I'll just do my outro now. Yeah, so sorry that this was kind of a really short video but I hope you guys still enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed seeing the fitting process and what this will hopefully eventually look like when it's in real fabric. I might be having to take a break for a little bit, maybe not this next week but maybe in the next few weeks because the house that we're moving into, we found dozens of dead mice in the ceiling of my studio. It was basically the kind of ceiling that you find in like middle school cafeterias where it's that weird crumbly stuff. We wanted to replace the ceiling and the walls already, but we didn't realize it was going to be such a big task because there were literally desiccated remains of mice stuck to the ceiling panels. So that was very traumatizing, honestly. <laughs> we were gonna clear it out so that the contractors could do the rest of the work of just putting stuff up, but now we need to get somebody else to take it all down because we don't have enough protective equipment to protect us from like decades of mouse death. And then we found like two large nests and then there was a third nest that we didn't want to touch because it was massive, spanned multiple ceiling tiles. So we're letting somebody else take care of that. The studio needs a lot of work. So if we end up moving before I have a place to sew, then obviously I'm not going to be able to make any videos because I won't have a place to sew. Hopefully the contractors will get back to us really quickly and we will be able to have a place that I can set up, but nothing about this process has been fast so far, so I'm a little concerned. So we might have to take a brief hiatus on this costume, which is really disappointing because we just got to the fun part. <laughs> I mean, not that like all the other stuff isn't fun, but got to the part that actually looks like the drawing. So, you know, that's life, but hopefully we'll be moving soon and hopefully I'll have a space to sew. That would be nice. Thank you guys for sticking with me. I hope that taking a break isn't too much of a disappointment for you guys. Probably less of a disappointment for you guys than it is for me. Well, hopefully I will see you guys soon and hopefully I'll be able to keep working on stuff. We're trying to move all of my sewing stuff 
very last minute so that it's the last thing that we do move so I still have a place to work up until I lose my place to work so that's that's kind of the plan so far that's all I got if you liked this video please drop a thumbs up that's not what you say um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you just want to chat a little bit, commiserate with my loss of a studio space, then please leave a comment. If you want to see the rest of this costume when I am eventually able to get it done, then please hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you here. And yeah, I, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Baby, you want to say bye? Meow. Yeah. No. Oh. I can't pick you up. Okay. Baby that says bye too. Okay. Bye. <laughs>